Welcome to the Na Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Mac tutorials. Uh, today I'm going to keep going on cash flow management. Uh, I was doing some of that in NAV um, 2018 and uh, now I'm going to just keep going with the functionality inside um, Business Central. So this is new functionality. I haven't videotaped this before, but it's inside Business Central and it works just as well in NAV 2018 or even uh, previous versions. So you just have to kind of understand that it might look different, but it works for you. All right. So I'm going to go here into uh, search, go into cash flow forecasts. And I have one cash flow forecast in the system, default one. Just to remind us how this works, um, I can actually see here the cash availability by periods for this forecast. And that is the whole purpose of it, just to see how our cash is doing. So I have this much in receivables, this much in payables, the total is here, and I got my liquid funds here, 98,000. So uh, you can see that it takes into account liquid funds, of course. So 67,000 is here, 49,000 I have to pay. And since I have 98,000, I have 116,000 left. Um, but so this is all based on time, obviously, cash flow changes with time. I've actually never understood how you can do cash flow with account schedules. Some people have actually set that up. But, you know, one of the biggest problems with cash flow is that People just don't pay you on time. Uh, and sometimes you negotiate with the vendors. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it's that game of checks in the mail. But anyways, what we're going to do is explore how we can actually account for that in the cash flow management. So if I close this out and uh, I go in here, so I'm just going to show you in the cash flow worksheet where we actually register changes, I hit suggest worksheet lines, I get in my liquid funds, my receivables, my payables, hit OK. So that basically grabs all of the invoices, all of the you know, sales invoices, purchase invoices uh, that are in the system and puts it into this worksheet. And I can actually change the dates here if I wanted to. If I wanted to actually modify this, I can. So um, if, for example, here, we see that the, uh, fine, the School of Fine Art has a few invoices that were due on the 28th of February. Uh, the system is pushing it to the work date, which is today, and basically saying they're going to get paid today. Yeah, chances are they're not going to all get paid today. Not all overdue invoices are going to get paid today. So that's kind of annoying to do that. Uh, and if I had to actually go into this manually and change the dates, that would be also annoying because there are, might be lots of invoices. So I'm going to just register this. Uh, so it actually goes into my cash flow like that. And I'm going to show you a little feature that can be useful when it comes to this. So if I go into the actual forecast, which is default, my default forecast, uh, I have a couple of options here. One of them, for example, is move over to cash flow dates to work date. That's what happened uh, with that invoice. It got pushed to the um, April 9th to work date and actually all overdue invoices. So it's doing that. It's OK, but we have something else here. We have something called consider cash flow payment terms. And I'm going to activate that. All right. What does that allow me to do? Again, it's uh, maybe not the perfect scenario, but it's much better. So if I close out of here and I go into my customer list, so right here, um, and I go into School of Fine Art. And so here, I can actually go into the payments. And I have here the cash flow payment terms code. So I can set up a different cash flow payment terms. So basically, we might have net 30 with the customer, but we know they always pay two months late or a month late. 
So I'm going to be a little bit extreme here. I'm going to pick uh, some really long. Uh, let's say I'm going to create a new one, new payment terms. Uh, and I'm going to call it six months. Obviously, this is crazy extreme. Six, oops, six months. Okay. okay. And I'm going to put them on six months, but I'm just doing that to explain the whole thing. Now, if you're using Business Central and you're trying to follow this video and you cannot find cash flow payment terms here, you will have to go up into the designer up here and actually drop it in um, because out of the box it's not showing. I don't know why, but it isn't. Maybe that will be in the next version showing. But anyways, just worth noting. All right, so if I go out here, yes, click this so it shuts off, and I am going to go into the cash flow forecast again. I'll just look for it. Um, right, so, and if I go into my worksheet and I do suggest lines, and I'm gonna keep a keen eye on the School of Fine Arts. Look at that. So the School of Fine Art, instead of putting into the work date, actually puts it into August because they have now a six month term on cash flow. We actually do not believe that they're going to pay us anytime soon. Uh, and we don't want to account for that coming into the cash flow. So at least you can do it like that. Uh, you know, it would be great if you could push it even further uh, with some more tactics. But but this is what comes out of the box. Um, so uh, it would uh, help basically with creating a realistic cash flow. So I hope you got something out of this um, using cash flow payment terms. Uh, thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks.